back to the Bellagio 510, and although I've been in this game for about an hour, I've yet to have anything really to play. Here, I decide to open Jack 7 of Diamonds from the cutoff, which is a little wide, but I hope my tight image will work in my favor. The small blind calls. He then checks on the 8 of Hearts, 5 of Clubs, 9 of Diamonds flop. This isn't a bad flop for my hand, or my range really, but the small blind has been just as tight as I have been in his preflop calling range should be as well. A lot of pocket pairs in that range, so I elect not to push my equity and check it back. The turn queen of clubs appears and he checks again. The queen is good for me, at least it should be better for me than him, plus I don't want to end up on the river holding just jack high. I bet $40 and he calls. I'm going to need some help here. The river king of diamonds isn't necessarily the help I was hoping for, but the small blind checks again. Okay, I have jack high, but I bet turn, and now the river has come and is even better for me than the turn was. I'm blocking jack 10, so that's good. I bet $70, really just trying to get him off a hand like ace high. He wastes no time in calling. I say jack high as I begin to muck my cards, and he shows me how pocket fours work. Wow. They played us like a damn fiddle! Okay, so we are vlogging today, but I forgot to do my vlog opening, so I'm going to do it right here in front of the Bellagio. We're playing poker. That's it. That's the open. About 20 minutes later, action is folded to us in the cutoff, and we open to $25 with <laughs> the hand that shall not be named. And I get one person to join me, the big blind. Before the flop appears, I begin wondering how this hand is going to screw me this time, and I'm a bit more than a little shocked when it reveals ace, seven, ten with two spades and the big blind checks. Well, that's not bad. Not bad at all. I see bet for $35, and he calls. The turn deuce of clubs, besides putting two different flush draws on board, really changes nothing. When the big blind checks again, we slide in the overbet, $150. If he has a weaker ace or a draw, his decision just got a lot tougher, and it's not out of the question that I have that type of hand too. The power of position. He doesn't take too long with it before he folds. P.S. I still hate this starting hand. Well played, sir. You got me. <laughs> you got more chips, you know? You Oh look, 3-5. Oh no, no, no. It has to be 3-5 suited, like me. If it's 3-5 suited, it's the nuts. Another 30 minutes or so passes before this next one. I open pocket sixes from the hijack and again get called by the small blind. Different guy. This guy, not nearly as tight as the guy in the other hand. His small blind calling range could basically be anything. So when we catch the ace eight deuce with two diamonds board and he checks, I begin to grab chips for a C bet, but he folds before I can even finish my action. We get called to move from the must move game to the main game and instantly I look down at, well, a nothing really. 8-7 offsuit in the cutoff. And so I open a $25 because why not? They fold.
two hands later, an early position player opens to $30, and since we are sitting pretty deep, I find the flat with pocket fives in the low jack. Just the two of us see this flop. Ace, jack, king with two diamonds. This shit hit his range way, way, way harder than mine, but his face says disinterested, almost disgust. He checks, I check. The turn queen of clubs doesn't change his demeanor much, and he checks again. If we can get him off a hand like pocket eights, that's a big win. We toss $25 into the middle, and he folds. He blocked I yeah, yeah. don't believe him. <laughs> I don't do this much live, but in this next hand, I honestly misread my cards preflop. The straddle is on, and from the cutoff, I open a $50 with king six of clubs. The small blind and straddler call, and I peek down at my cards again, as I always do, to discover that my king of clubs has morphed into a king of spades. Sorry. Yeah, I know they all look alike. No, they no, don't. They don't. <laughs> What the hell? Well, we're here now. Jack, four, king, rainbow. This flop gets checked through. The turn seven of diamonds puts two diamonds on board, and now the small blind leads out for a big size, $120, which causes the straddler to insta-fold. Not me. Me and my off-suited king come along. The river pairs the seven and the small blind fires again, $220. So the draw's missed and a lot of bigger kings and hands that are two pair plus may have raised preflop. I'm chopping with king 10 and worse, so I call. He just mucks his hand. I don't end up showing the table my hand, but I do tell them that I misread it. Believe it or not, I actually misread my hand that and this just happened to flop really well. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, I just read man. Oh, here she comes. Look out, boy, she'll chew you up. Oh, here she comes. She's a man eater. I just, I just have it, you know. <laughs> Private eyes, they're watching you. They see your every move. What'd you do with that money your mother gave you? <laughs> What's that? What'd you do with that money your mother gave you? <laughs> Play poker with it? I haven't warmed up, sir. <laughs> this is just raw. That's just, that's just raw talent you hear there. No lessons. Another 30 minutes or so after misreading my king, I look down at pocket kings in the hijack. I double checked. It is in fact pocket kings. The under the gun player has opened a $30 and I find a pretty standard three bet to $100. She calls. Six, deuce, three, rainbow. She checks and I continue with the standard C bet for $80. If I thought this hand would be over, well, I better think again because she's a battler and proceeds to battle. She check raises me to $240. Hmm. The only hand I'm really concerned with is pocket sixes. She's not opening deuces or threes and calling three bets. And although she may theoretically with four or five suited, it doesn't happen much in practice. I call the check raise. The turn 10 of hearts could have hit either of us, but she continues. $400, not folding, call. The Queen of Spades River and her checking after it falls is a good sight. There'd be zero reason to check a set or any other hand that is better than Kings now. We tank for a bit as we decide our sizing and make it $240 for value, but her hand hits the muck pretty quickly.
In this game, it's rarely just a straight uphill climb. And in this next hand, I really just level myself. I open a $25 in the hijack with ace-queen all suit and only get action from the big blind. Fair enough. Ace, nine, four, rainbow. He checks and I continue for $15 and he check raises me to $60. I realize that a lot of the population see my $20 and $25 open as weak and my C-bet sizes as weak too. I level myself into thinking that's what induced his check raise. So I call the $60. The turn brings the king of spades and his aggression continues. $140. I have a good hand and I've seen this guy bluff before. But here's where I probably should eject. I don't. I call. When the river seven of diamonds appears, he now fires $300 my way. Eject, Jamin. Eject. Rare is the player in this field that from the big blind is going to check raise and then bomb, bomb as a stone bluff. Just fold. I tank for a while on this. And, well, we don't fold. You can't win if you fold. I call, he shows me king for offsuit, and I lose. I do take a bit of solace in knowing that I was kind of right. He took my seabed as weak. Too bad I can't pay bills with solace, though. All right, we're headed out for the mid session update. This is my mid session update face. Like I don't, I don't know what's going on in that game, but we'll talk about it. Okay, so my table, my table's kind of wacky. Played a really kind of, I don't know, a strange hand when I had pocket kings and uh, I got check raised on the flop. That one ended up in my favor, though. And then I just played a very interesting hand with ace-queen offsuit um, versus a player that bluffs a lot. Um, the line he took of check-raising flop, betting turn, betting river is probably skewing him to a lot of value and not many bluffs, even though he bluffs a lot. And... Uh, at the time, I was trying to reconcile all of that and go through all the possible hands he had. And at the end of the day, I just paid him off. It was probably a bad call. I probably should have should have just folded it. Oh, but we'll think about that one for a while. Other than that, the game is just kind of, I won't call it dead. I'll just say it is slow. The game is slow. And uh, I call this the mid-session update, but I probably have maybe an hour, hour and a half in me. Um, I'm going to try to get to bed a little bit early tonight and wake up bright and early to play uh, tomorrow. And then Friday uh, is the WPT premier meetup game. So I'm going to be there for most of that. So i got two early days ahead of me. So I might call this one sooner than later. But until then, let's make this uh, next 90 minutes work. Back from the mid-session update and full of that fresh Bellagio Valet air. We fight on. In this one, the hijack opens to $30, the small blind calls, and I slide in an additional $20 from the big blind with red ducks. Let's try to flop quads and win a monster. No quads. King, queen, eight. All clubs. This checks through. Five of diamonds on the turn. Checks through. Three of diamonds on the river. The small blind checks. I check. And now the hijack bets $50. The small blind folds. $50? What are you betting $50 at, sir? A king or a queen would likely just check it back. And why would you bet pocket tens, nines, or an eight? 
I don't believe you. I call. He shows Jack Tin offsuit. <laughs> <laughs> You out of here? Yeah, 52. Yeah. Can I get a table change? <laughs> <laughs> when playing against someone that is extremely fit or fold, you can make exploitative calls, which are bad from a GTO perspective, given that you have a plan to achieve victory on certain runouts. Here I open with Ace-10 offsuit from the button, which is fine, and the small blind three bets. And from a GTO perspective, this is probably a four better fold spot. But I call knowing that the small blind isn't aggressive enough post flop, and I may be able to just take this pot away from them. The flop comes 965 rainbow, and the small blind checks. He's dead. There's not much he can do now, and it's going to be really hard to combat me if I just start firing away. I start with $80, and that does the trick. A bit later, the hijack opens to $30, and looking down at pocket aces from the cutoff, I find a pretty natural 3-bet to $100. He calls. This guy is new to the table. In fact, this is his first hand scene. Also, he has the look of a blaster, and doesn't even have all of his chips in front of him yet. The chip runner is off to grab him. 10 of clubs, 9 of hearts, 5 of spades. He checks and I check it back. Turn, seven of clubs. He bets $100 and I just call, hoping that my assumption that he will blast is correct. The river pairs the five, so even if he flopped top two, I'm now ahead. He fires $300 and I snap call. He shows queen, seven of hearts. So see, sometimes I assume correctly. Okay, wrap up time while we're waiting for the car. And there's no one around right now, so I'm going to tell you for the night I ended up almost 1100, like somewhere in that somewhere in that range. Um the game, like I said in the mid-session update, was kind of wacky. Like, it was super slow with periods of just people losing their minds. Um, the last period of somebody losing their mind was uh, when I picked up aces and the guy just bet 300 on the river for what? Um, but overall, profitable night. I can't complain. Um, it's time to go home. We've got another long day tomorrow and then another long day on Friday. And at some point, I'm going to have to edit something. So if you like the vlogs, like the vlogs and uh, subscribe and leave me a comment and I'll probably respond. And you guys know all of this by now. Bye. Bright and early, my friends. Bright and early. This is an insane fold, but I don't know what is that size. I didn't want to get drawn out on. Oh, wow. I think I lost um, a couple small pots. I remember actually I lost the pot with aces. I think that happened after the mid session update. Dealer, I want you to flop them dead. Both of them. I'm going to teach them a lesson right here. Me and, me and you. That river hit my dick completely like shriveled up inside of my body. <laughs> like it was com completely gone right now. Sorry to disappoint you, but I didn't mess up that many times this time. <laughs>
not that many near perfect. The game, like I said in the mid session update, was kind of. I won't kind. Of, I won't kind. Of, <laughs> okay, let's get right down to business. Um, they're doing some wacky shit in my game. Just wackiness, like. <laughs> We are going to try our best. Now, why is the light so much better this way? I did something. So, if you like the vlogs, like the vlogs and uh, subscribe and leave me a comment and I'll probably respond. And you guys know all of this by now. Bye. Maybe I'm just a dead man.